percent of the vote is uh, i mean and the other thing while we wait on, on these players to start oh lcf oh wow LCF. wall breakers game one against morden fascinating choice here from china's greatest player wall breakers against morton i mean if he goes piggies game two then we certainly know it's a full-on troll job yeah i mean this is really risky for him i think it w the only thing riskier would be morton actually running that because everyone just counters sure. him but think about it on lc absent what if it would have been a mirror match wall breakers against the best minor wall breakers player in the history of CRL? drill wall breakers here for Elsiop, so fascinating choice. You do have the mortar to pick up wall breakers and the arrows for that drill cleanup. We'll see how this one shakes he out has, in the long run. He also has skellies that he could defend the, the wall breakers with, as you see there, a little bit of a miss. Ooh. And not, a, not something we usually see out of Morden. I think he expected the Valk to keep on moving forward. Instead, it was still in range. But I think he has a lot of great answers. Like you were talking about, those arrows can come in onto that drill. He has the mortar that's going to force out a bunch of troops because you can't just stop a mortar with the bomber. The fire spirit will only delay it for a little bit. The cannon card should take care of the Valk over and over again. And it's getting a little scary. It seems like Morden is falling behind in cycle quite a bit. What's the key you think for Elsioff in winning this matchup? Just keep up the pressure. The second that he falls back and over defends, Morden will take control of the match, and that is where it gets really bad for Elsioff. Elsioff has to continuously pressure, especially in this single uh, elixir right now. He has the way quicker cycle. He has the direct damage onto tower, and if Morden can just survive a little bit longer, I think he can't just survive the first minute of double elixir. He's going to need a little bit more time than that. He'll be good to go. Mortar has to go high for those wall breakers. Gets picked up by the bomber. A yeah. Pressure on the left hand lane. And here we go. Graveyard number one. Yeah. Guards should come down as well. He decides not to play the guards. And that's actually a good choice because Morden did not use the arrows on that defense. And that is why he was able to mm. uh, really push with that graveyard. He forces out the Valk. The Valk will go down to this cannon card, and he puts himself in a really good situation. Morden is slowly turning the match around. Even though the damage hasn't come in, you'll be able to see that. And he can, he's continuing to use the mortar so he can keep the arrows for the guards onto the graveyard. He's playing this so smart. Guards now not in cycle for graveyard, but no tank available as well. So. We see the pressure coming in right hand side and this is interesting you see the way that lc is forcing the arrows out with those drill wall breakers pushes making it just a little bit earlier than maybe morton would like yeah he has to do that it is the only way that he'll have full control on defense the guards were perfect there from lc Op. a great understanding of where the weakness is for morton and where the strengths lie for Morden as well. He wants to keep that out of Morden's hands, and that is why he's pushing like that. He knows he's not going to get any damage out of the wall breakers and drill push, but that also leaves Morden without an ability to actually push the way he wants to. Graveyard in, Valk on defense this time, just skeletons for those wall breakers. Does not miss this time around, so that's a nice one Ooh. elixir trade. And he got a, a couple skelly hits there at the end from the skelly in the front, and this match is. Pretty even at this point. Elsioff lost his whole lead. The wall breaker is going on the left hand side, but now he has to drop a bomber or a Valk. He decides to go Tesla onto this mortar. And if I'm Morden right now, I'm sitting back being patient because this is triple elixir. All I need is one good graveyard, and this is game over. Setting up defense on the right hand side, so Elsioff goes left hand lane instead. Mortar goes high, and this mortar might get a connection. No, goes back towards the goblin drill and a nice pickup by Elsioff with the Tesla in the middle. Yeah, I, the mortar actually does connect oh. onto tower, but it's on the wrong side. It's not really that big of a deal unless he doesn't defend it at all. Beautiful set of arrows there. Morden does have fireball as well, and that mortar continuously connecting. And did you see those skellies catch wow. that fire spirit? That mortar is doing work. 2088, and we'll see if he does keep the stab goblins off. They do get a couple of shots here. 1960 to 1543. Morton, though, way in the lead with about 12 seconds left. Yeah, and he has two spells as opposed to the one spell from Elsiop. He could go ahead and just take this right now. I don't see any wall breakers connecting with three seconds left. Elsiop, you can see it in his face, not happy. Morton with a great game, and 
you know, we've we've seen a sort of a shift in graveyard yeah. more recently. Win conditions overall. There was a lot for the longest time if you asked a grave LCOP now is do we see the guy who was at one point the best bridge spam player on the planet go back to bridge spam here? Yeah, yeah. bridge spam is just it's either an incredible matchup or you just get stuck and sure. you cannot break through. He has the Golden Knight, which is a sign of bridge spam. It is the new bandit, the new and improved bandit, we can say. More than showing guards, and when you're trying to catch miners, that's not a bad thing to have. Not at all, and we are going to minor Golden Knight both sides. Of course, not the exact same matchup that we just saw in game two of our Muhammad Light mini miner match, but you are seeing how popular this two card combination is right now. Yeah, it's definitely one of the strongest in the game because you know they're gonna play troops to try and catch that miner. And if you could just get that Golden Knight to dash onto tower with those troops that are coming off of that defense, you get so much value. So the combination is one that I absolutely love. Slight lead right now for Nova's LC up 24-33 to 26-17, courtesy of that Mortar connection. So we saw Morton run Mortar in game number one. Now LC up with Mortar in game number two. And you know, a big thing to talk about here because it's been interesting. For a long time, the Mega Minion kind of fell out of favor. And there was a point where Mega Minion was everywhere. It got nerfed about two years ago. But right now, the Mega Minion is showing up over and over and over again. It's so strong, especially against a deck like this. The Golden Knight on the bridge is usually the, the last card coming through. It's alone. A Mega Minion is able to defend it very well. It has a high DPS. You can't just fireball it. You would have to overextend your, uh, you know, the elixir. And it puts you in a nice position. I think that is why we're seeing it. Also, the fact that, you know, Musketeer Hunter has fallen out of favor. Both of those cards were very good cards against the Mega Minion. Final minute of regulation. Double elixir starting to flow, and Morton sets up his Golden Knight in the back. It will pick up the mortar along with the Tesla to clear it off the board as we go into our final minute. Yeah, and what I have seen from Morton is he's not really using that dash all that much. I've seen his uh, Golden Knight cross the bridge, I think, three times without a dash. And people might be thinking, why is he doing that if it's going to go down anyway? It's still an extra elixir that he's keeping in his pocket, but that is, I was about to say, he needs to be careful with those guards because if a dash was activated there, that Golden Knight from Elsiop would have hit tower. And slowly but surely, Elsiop is taking full control here. Cannon Cart does get taken down by the Log Miner in Mega Minion High, but the defensive Mega Minion goes to the Miner, not to the offensive. Pressure doesn't matter either way, does hold on. But it is Elsiop ahead by about a thousand or about 700 HP. Yeah, this is the first real dash we get out of Morden on the other side of the field. I'm not sure if that Golden Knight will live. It does not, unfortunately, for him. I think he was just off of his second dash there. If he was able to get that connection, it would have been amazing to get him back in the game. But that was overall a very good push for him. Poison pressure in for Morton. Miner go to the back this time. Poison high, not on all the spears, but will yeah. help take down a bit of that. Golden Knight in the front tanking. This is a lot coming down the pipe from Nova Zelsia. Yeah, this is very scary. He does catch the dash yet again. So Morden being very smart about those guards, not getting caught with the opposing gold, uh, Golden Knight. But Morden is back in this. Those poisons and miners have been so brutal to Elsiop because he doesn't have guards. It seems a little bit like the situation that we saw earlier with Mini Minter. One player has something to really catch that miner over and over again while the other player is just struggling oh. to keep it off. Oh, wow. And that was a very, very nice early guards from Morton, protecting both the back, the sides, and the front and able to hold on with the catch. Right now, Elsiop up by a little over 100 HP, but here we go. Poison in, Miner in, and a nice switch there by Morton to go Miner to the front. We are very tight. Ooh. Lightning in, 146. This is very, very close. Morton has to get damage in very quickly before that Lightning finishes things off. Yeah, Miner is going to come in here, but he oh, catches it with his own Miner. What a catch. And a Lightning oh block. My. Oh, my word. Log Poison. down. Morton oh. gets the log. 18 HP. Unbelievable. Oh. My word, pull that in the booth, RF. That was an insane finish here. That's what you want at World Finals. That was incredible. I, I didn't even know who was making the better plays. That was so nice. You see the transition from LCOP catching a miner at the front channel. Here we go. 
game number three, Morton and Elsiop, a winner's bracket spot on the line. And Morton, wow. one of the all-time great bait players going bait. Bait, one of the all-time greats in, in bait in 1v1, in 2v2, uh, probably a triple draft as well. He is very comfortable with bait. My worry for him is, did Elsiop expect this? You already see the cage for the wall breakers. You see the bar barrel there as well for the uh, goblin barrel. There are a lot of answers very early on. Princess cycle to the right-hand side. And oh, man. Wow. Rough. This is real, real rough. Both Princess and Archer Queen, interesting wrinkle in this deck. Yeah, it's, the, my biggest issue here is if one of his cards happens to be delivery somehow, this is game over already. There is no way he's gonna get damage. He has that, yeah, he's just going with Cage. So basically what we talked about earlier, we said delivery was the second best defense for Archer Queen, and after that, it is that Goblin Cage. He decides to go with, oh, Rare mistake there out of Morton to put it so close that one wall breaker gets taken out. That is a very rough matchup if you're a Morton fan. And we know 78% of the chat is a Morton fan. We also know that Morton is one of the players who gets the roughest matchup history in all of Clash Royale. So some of those woes do continue. Still early on, no significant damage either direction. As we go past the first minute 40 seconds, Morton has quite a lot on the board. He does, but a cage should come down here in the middle, or he, he's actually defending defensive hoggies. I don't think I'll say that many times throughout World Finals, but overall, just a very solid play there from Elsiop. He needs to throw a cage down. This will not be enough. He doesn't have Elixir. This wow. is gonna connect. And Morden in Morden fashion somehow makes wall breakers connect in a deck that they have no business connecting. And now just a pressure goblin barrel, but of course, Bar Barrel not available, so there you go. Good damage, 18.03. Morton out to a big lead here in game three. Yeah, Morton in a very nice position. It was gonna be very tough for him to get that to connect. He is able to grab this lead, and now he can just play safe. We know Morton is very capable of defending very big pushes with you know those small units. He does have the cage, but he needs to be careful with the flying machine beautiful catch there with the rascals as long as he's not caught off without elixir he should be okay well the great thing about this deck in this situation eric is that you know when you're worried about the flying machine with no fireball you're worried about bridge battles yeah and that this is not a bridge battle deck that morton's running it plays deep on defense on his side or deep in offense on the opposing side yeah this is it was a very risky choice i'm not gonna fully back the deck but the way it's panning out has been absolutely perfect for Morden. I was just, you know, praising the fact that he hasn't really gone to wall breakers, he hasn't been predictable. This could have been a lot worse, but this is still a lot of damage coming in. Quite a bit in indeed, and just like that, the lead will go the opposite direction, 14.06 to 15.42. Morden is going to have to get some more damage in quickly. In triple elixir, he does outcycle, but it's gonna be an issue with that Barbarella and that cage. What he has to do is try to force out that cage with the Archer Queen so that he's able to get that Wall Breakers push that he did earlier on. For as long as that Archer Queen is not demanding the cage, it is gonna be virtually impossible to connect and that is what you wanna see. Cage comes down, now we can get a Wall Breakers push. Rascals coming in hopefully just in time on Morton's side and they do get in front to stop the connection from the flying machine but poison gets a ton of value elsia putting on very very good pressure right now with the final 50 seconds in triple he needs to start you know really throwing those barrels out you need to throw those goblin barrels out try to get one of them to connect even one stab will be enough here we go we got the barrel out he needs to go defensive now cage should come in beautiful cage up high but that flying machine just doing so much work and not able to get the magic, the Archer Queen on the flying machines. Now two princesses and the mark though, 8.06, 23 seconds left and one very important point here, Eric, no big spell, no yeah. direct damage at all in the deck of Mort. I'm not gonna say my take again on no big spell because you already know where I stand with that. Just too risky. Last game, no big spell, no direct damage, even though you do have that barrel. That's it for Morton. Wow. Absolute wow, Morton will drop down 
into the elimination bracket. Elsia with an amazing come from behind performance in this matchup or amazing one to, sorry, to, to, yeah, to come from behind the reverse yeah. sweep here against El, against Morton. And man, you, you, know, you go back to game number two and how close that ending was. And that really is a deciding factor in this match. That's why you never want to play against Elsia. No. He was down 0-1 to Morton.